This is the Everything Weight Loss Podcast with Shari Ware, where we talk about everything, all things, anything to do with weight loss, health, and wellness. So today I'm talking to Linda Joy Ben, who's an international wellness alchemist and industry leader in the consciousness revolution. Her mission is to help people thrive by empowering them to lead a healthier, happier and more productive life. Definitely on my page. Having overcome cancer, chronic fatigue, autoimmune and an eating disorder without medical intervention, Linda has the expertise, knowledge and healing capabilities to transform people's lives. She combines her fast experience in holistic healing and training with her genuine love of people and walks them through each step to have enthusiasm and purpose for their life. The Ben Method, founded by Linda Ben, empowers people to go from trauma to thriving resulting in freedom, love, peace and joy. I absolutely love all of that. So first of all, Linda, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Shari. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I know that you have an amazing story. I mean, um, you've overcome quite a few things in your life from the sounds of that introduction I just gave. So tell us more about that. Tell us what, what's the story? So I I grew up in a very unhealthy, volatile family and um, mum and dad were forced to get married because mum fell pregnant to my older sister and back in those days you had to get married. Um, but neither of them were happy. (laughs) And so I was second um, born and mum had actually kept leaving dad during, um, well, prior to me and running back to her parents and then her parents would keep sending her back to dad. Uh, So she was very stressed. Um, And then three months in utero, I was going to be destroyed and um and then by the time i was born um mum was so sick that she couldn't breastfeed me and it was just a very stressful environment so the the fight and flight was kind of set up in my nervous system back then and the rejection and abandonment um as well as not having that bond um with my mum as well as yeah the nourishment um and so going um through school like dad was working on the boat he was stressed um it was quite abusive and then my older sister was literally trying to kill me um physically emotionally mentally um yeah so um, but I always felt ostracized because I knew I was different. And, and even when, so, yeah, I, well, I remember a time when I was in grade two and mum would come and pick up my older sister from school, but I had to walk home. Um, so it was that, you know, abandonment that was really set in back then. And so growing up, um, then that led into, you know, my teenage years and just being constantly criticised. My older sister kept telling me how fat and ugly I was. So then um, I thought that you had to be thin in order to be loved or how was I ever going to attract a boyfriend, you know, if I was so fat and ugly. And so that led into the eating disorder. And then my dad was also criticizing me um, because my mum and dad separated when I was 10. So dad was really angry and, and then for some reason just picked on me and kept telling me, you know, I've got no brains, I take after my mother, I can't do anything right, I'm a failure, blah, blah. So there was a lot of imprinting done back in my childhood years and lots of traumatic events, one after the other. And by the time I was 21, I was in so much emotional pain and I created cancer. And 
the doctors I was planning on traveling and then the doctor said you, you cannot leave Australia you know you have to stay and get treatment it's like no get me out of this country because I knew that yeah I was dying I I was in so much pain my family didn't really it was like oh well you know that there was no care or love or affection you know growing up and I was just craving that love and so I met my first spiritual teacher um, when I was in San Jose California when I started traveling and doing my three-year walkabout and he's the one that healed me but he helped me to understand my purpose why I was here and also why I chose my parents mm. and and the family that I came into and this was such a strong foundation and awakening for me to really understand you know the big picture and and what what I was here to do um, because he said to me back then he said if you keep going down this track you'll be dead um, and he was highly intuitive and I, I learned so much from him um, I used to spend a couple of days with him every single week so I learned a lot of my spiritual foundation um, back then and that's what opened me into more of the natural therapies path and started studying um, learning many many different modalities it was always the, the spirituality and the psychic tools and um, the more intu intuition which I was real gravitating to and the healing and so everything that I studied it was also helping me to heal my own wounds and and that's when I, you know, started my business 20 years ago um, and, and I was, you know, on this journey of, you know, healing myself from the, the trauma and the rejection and the abandonment and all the, the, the hurt and all the old beliefs and programs and patterns that were set up. So I've been working on myself <laughs> ever since, you know, to unravel all, all those neurological <laughs> networks in my brain. Yeah. And, yeah, it, and it's been a journey. Um, wow. I've experienced a lot of things in, in my life, so it doesn't matter what, people come to me with I I have compassion for them yeah so you've overcome the cancer and the eating disorder and tell us about the chronic fatigue and the autoimmune where did where did that come in that came in um, about four years ago. Um, I moved to California in 2010 and I was living there for seven years and it's a very fast lifestyle over there and I gave everything um, plus I moved 15 times so I, again <laughs> I was constantly on on the move and and being a very creative being um, I also need to be grounded but with all this moving and and living out of my car and, and not literally but I was on the road so much that it felt like I was just living out of my car <laughs> and um and so I became quite burnt out um just exhausted and I came back to Australia and and it was like okay what's what's next um and I knew that I wasn't well well, I, my energy had dropped and I, I felt that. So then I went to the doctors and they gave me all these labels and I had all the blood tests and other tests. And, um, and then at the same time, um, my family um, were just attacking me, you know, judgment, criticism, blame, and, and pretty much all those old wounds from my childhood all just just hit me in my face and I just made the decision then you know what I'm done get me off this planet 
So I created the disease in my body and, and I made that decision um, and I cut off from source energy, cut off from my inner child and then very quickly witnessed my physical body just deteriorating. Mm. And, and in, in that short time, I was so depleted and undernourished and I lost so much weight that I dislocated my hip and my knee because I had no muscles to hold my joints together and I was super thin and yeah I was just wasting away and it's I then um I yeah my, my brain wasn't functioning I had trouble even putting a sentence together or concentrating during the day I was so fatigued that uh I had to keep laying down um and having naps throughout the day and my liver was down to 38 percent functioning adrenals were a flat line um yeah I lost sight in my left eye so I, I wasn't in a good way yeah <laughs> um, and then th through this process that's when I um came up with the Ben method now I was seeing a doctor and and he was just getting quite upset with me you know you have to take the medication you have to you know yeah. and and so and it was like no it goes against everything that I've studied and believe and and I I realized back then is that it's like I'm in charge of my own healing. Mm -hmm. I make the choices for my health and wellness and my direction in my life, and I will heal my body. And so that's where it was a process of really healing the um, trauma and the pain with my family. So I had to come back to Australia in order to heal my relationship with my family and so that that was key and in the my recovery um is when I came up with the Ben method which is balance energy nurture and nourish and and that those four key points so important mm -hmm. in everyone's life and it's a model that's sustainable to take you through the rest of your life because without source energy flowing through you, which is your life force energy, you know, you don't have the energy. Plus my life was so out of balance um, because during this time I was still exercising like a crazy woman, um, which was even putting more ex um, stress on my body and my adrenals, cortisol wasn't sleeping. And so I'd punish myself with okay since I'm not sleeping I'll go to the gym and do a 5 30 class yeah and, and then I'll do another one after that and I'll just you know keep pushing myself and it was just yeah all that's not nourishing or nurturing my body so through the the process of healing is um that's when I looked at these four key areas. What do I need? And it all comes back to self-love, yeah. self-compassion, yeah. self-forgiveness, and and really um, loving myself. And 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 what I learned, you know, from my family is that even though they they well, I, I don't want to say they don't love me, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're just not on the same wavelength. My spirituality really pushes their buttons and and triggers them. So then they project on onto me mm -hmm. um, their unresolved issues. And, and it, I, I just have to keep raising my vibration, raising my light um to shine out their their darkness yeah sure so if i was to ask you out of all of this and i've got more questions about all of this but i'll ask this question first if you were to say that you had a superpower uh, what would that be because it feels to me like that's a very big part of your story very much so 
I would say my intuitive gift with the ability to heal the mind and, and the body. Yeah, absolutely. Because it goes, it, it's connected. Oh, it's everything, definitely. Everything's connected, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. And, and the areas I work is, you know, the physical, emotional, mental, energetic and spiritual. So I've always worked very holistically and and to look at what what's the root cause what's behind it all um and yeah with everything that i've studied over the years um it's like wow i'm a soul in this body on on this journey as we all are and and to really come back to my true authentic self Mm. um and believe you know that i'm i'm source energy in this physical body i'm a magnificent you know amazing being um being of service to others and we all have a story and we've all experienced trauma and if it's unresolved well then it can lead to illness or disease yeah, and that's such a big issue, isn't it? You've, you've said a couple of times uh, whilst telling your story you've, that you created these things in your body. So talk to us more about that. What does that mean for, for people who have never come across that before? So it, it's it, consciously, so at the time um, it was like, oh, um, you know, I've been given these labels. But because I was so depressed and, and basically committing energetic suicide, that I made the decision and it was like, you know what, I'm, I'm done, you know, get, get me off. And, and that was my way. I was getting my affairs in order and cleaning up, um, you know, things that, so that everything was kind of organised and and so though now I, I look back and it was like I had to hit rock bottom mm. and go mm. to the the depths of the depths of very low vibration, suicide, depression, illness, and disease, in order to see um well, how to get out, how to heal myself, and everything's a choice. Yeah. And, and also have compassion for those who are stuck there. And because it's, if you can imagine a spider's web, and, and this is, you know, the medical system, and, and I'm not knocking the medical system, you know, because there is some very good in there, mm. but with medication, what that does is like poisons the person. So you're in the spider's web, the spider poisoned you, you're stuck in the web. And then from the medication, there's a lot of different side effects. And then you, you, you're disempowered. Yeah. It's like yeah. you lose your ability to heal yourself because you just kept giving given all these you know results these are your blood tests this is what's wrong with you this is what's wrong with you this is what's wrong with you and um and here you know you've got depression take this take that so my doctor was very upset with me because I would not take any medication and I was non-compliant though what I showed him is that I healed my body naturally through my recovery and now all my blood tests are completely normal so he has more faith in okay i'm i'm the captain of my own ship Mm. and i can heal my own body and i'm in charge of my health and well-being yeah definitely Uh, yeah So, so i think there's a couple of really key concepts um First of all, going back to the choices, is that, as you said, everything is a choice. We all have a choice. Mm -hmm. However, some, a lot of people don't realise, especially when they're down in in that dark place, you know, where you were at your lowest low, a lot of people 
don't aren't aware that they have a choice that uh, mm. they don't have to feel that way and that there are ways to get themselves out of there so that's a really big message I feel that people know that it doesn't have to be that way that that um, there are ways and and things that can help them so that's awesome the other thing I want to talk about is um, well there's three things so the second thing is belief so you believed am I right you believed that you could heal yourself naturally yes yes and that's yes. such a massive thing you believe that you could heal yourself naturally and so you did and it's mm -hmm. I think it's just really important um as you said it's not you're, you're not knocking the medical profession it's mm -hmm. just so important that people know that they're it's not the only way that there are other ways there are different ways and sometimes it takes a combination of you know lots of different things um yeah. but for you you believed that you could heal yourself so that was your way yes and it, it was my spiritual teacher when mm. I went and saw her she just took one look at me and just went Linda Ben what are you doing do you know who you are as a soul and I went yeah but I'm, I'm tired I'm exhausted so I got the spirit slap <laughs> and i love that, that spirit slap <laughs> yes um and and that's when um i decided um to actually make the my a new choice yeah. to stay and be of service to others and be able to help people who are down there in in the pit Mm -hmm. um and at those very low low points in their life and then empower them to come back and heal from the trauma and and heal their own bodies and so that's what i'm passionate about it's really about empowering other people to believe in themselves believe in who they are as a soul and and what a gift it is to be here in this physical body to experience this life yeah. and what we came here to learn and grow for our own soul's growth and evolution and that's what i'm really passionate about um, in helping people to transform their life and go from trauma to thriving resulting yeah. in freedom love peace and joy which is beautiful. I love that. So I've, and the, the third thing that I wanted to um, talk about as well, and, and we've spoken a little bit already, and I, I want to talk more about it, is this uh, concept of that we create these things. So that seems like it can be very negative. Like somebody could turn around and say, oh, no, I didn't create that. So walk us through that whole concept more so that people really understand that it's not it's it's not that they've done it intentionally mm. tell us more about that so it, it's we create everything in our lives and even when we don't don't like it mm. um, but it's about taking responsibility and really being honest and truthful with yourself um, with any circumstance, situation, you know, broken relationship or um, trauma or, you know, it's like we go through all of these different events in our lives and it's about really having an honest conversation with yourself and say, how did I create this? And what was the learning? What was the positive learning for me? Yeah. And so my positive learning from my family and they're all beautiful teachers and they're all playing roles for me because I was so craving love and acceptance what they've taught me is to love and accept myself and not look to the external world for love and acceptance and approval and acknowledgement mm. and and that's um that's key you yeah. know and also um with the um you know all the criticism and the and the judgment and 
And it was like, comes back to believe in myself, mm. believe in the amazing being that I am and really step into my power and not let anyone or anything pull you down. Mm. Yeah. And, and so that that's really key as well. Yeah, um, I feel that this um, this concept of that we are our own creation is so important uh, because I know that uh, in my own life I created a massive suit of armour of fat mm -hmm. around my body <laughs> because yes. it wasn't that anything that I set out to say, yeah, that's it. I didn't consciously say to myself, I want to get really, really big. I want to be 180 kilos. That's not mm. something I ever said to myself. In fact, quite the opposite. And nobody out there um, sets out to create those things in their life consciously. But that's the thing that people don't realise is that so many of these things that happen in our lives, even with uh, the negative things as well even though we think that we don't want them for some reason subconsciously we've contributed to them um, coming into our lives because of things that we aren't necessarily aware of um, so just for anybody who's listening that this might resonate with um, I did do an episode a little while ago on tribal cycles and roles, which I know that if this is a new concept to you and you um, you want to learn more about every how everything interacts, I will put the link to that in the show notes for people to listen to that as well because it was when I first learned about that, I know it was totally eye-opening and, and mind-boggling to me. <laughs> it wasn't something that, I, that, that had come into my world yet. So... Getting back to you and your story, Linda, I, I want to know what do you feel, if you, if you would say that there are, what would be the biggest things or, or the most common things that people do that don't serve them, that, that have a negative impact or, or help to create these things in our lives? It, it all starts with your thoughts. Your thoughts... And the stories you tell yourself mm -hmm. and then the words that you speak, um, you're putting an energy and vibration out there. So everyone's heard of the law of attraction, but literally you are planting the seeds for your future by your thoughts and, and the words that you say and the, the emotions are all part of your story but then it, it's you're giving energy to what you don't want. Yeah. So I, again, you know, weight, uh, physical weight, is an emotional protection. You know, of yep. absolutely protect me. I need to be safe. I I don't feel safe. And and so in that, um, it's about recognizing that you you can choose to be the, the victim or the victor mm -hmm. and and so with your thoughts and what you're telling yourself and again this is the work that I do with people with my 5R program of release realign restore rebalance re-energize we look at those old beliefs the old programs the old patterns the um, negative emotions the old stories, everything that's going on in our conscious mind, but looking at the unconscious of what is running mm. the old, the patterns. Yeah. And yeah. so it's about, it's, there's an analogy of, uh, because I'm from a boating family and that the ship is moving through the water. And what is driving the ship is the engines, which is the energy of this present moment. Mm -hmm. With a, a ship or a boat, it leaves a wake behind. Yeah. Now, the wake of where the boat has been has no power, it has no energy, and that's the same as our past life, our, our past mm -hmm. in this life. Yep. And what's moving the boat forward is the energy in this moment 
to keep moving us forward, being in touch with our internal GPS to get us to our end goal mm. and, and focus on our goal of where we want to go. So having that conversation, what do I truly want in my life? Mm. And then doing some deep soul searching of where are the blocks, what's stopping me? Yeah. What what stories, beliefs, old programs am I running? Mm. And where do I feel stuck in my life? And and you know, one of my gifts is I'm I have the ability to identify where the body is holding stuck energy and identify those blocks, but also identify what the mind is holding. Mm, so yeah. it's unraveling all of that and um, removing all that old programming yeah. so that people can come back to their true essence of who they are, their true authentic self, which yeah. is freedom, love, peace and joy because everyone on the planet just wants to be happy. Yeah, that's right. So that's the thing to realise that everybody... People get so frustrated with, frustrated with themselves and they're like, well, you know, why am I doing that? I don't want to do that. But what we don't realise is that there's a reason for everything we do. It's past programming. It's, it's, it's beliefs that we have that maybe we're not aware of. So it's really important to acknowledge that um, and to just work on undoing that programming or, or rewriting that programming, which is a choice that we have. Like a lot of people don't know that we have that choice. We do have that choice. The other thing I want to say is that I loved your analogy of the boat and I really loved, and it popped straight into my head as soon as you said it, you said that in the wake, that's all our, the wake is, is our past, that's where that's we've right. been and it holds no power. Mm. However, that's where the problem lies because so many of us give it power exactly by talking about it and talking you know and and just over and over yeah. um and we're giving it energy and power and keeping it alive yeah whereas your past is your past let it go yeah let go of all the attachments let go of the past yeah and yeah it, it's a process you know because <laughs> each day we're you know tested and triggered and, and it's like oh awesome you know every single person that we come in touch with um is a, a teacher in front of us yeah. you know whether yeah. they're projecting on to us whether they're triggering us and yeah. um and if you're triggered by by someone it's like looking within yourself you know of okay what's going on inside of me yeah. that is yeah. triggered you know so it's coming to the place of peace and neutrality and and I can honestly say that's how I feel with my family now yeah but though that's taken years yeah definitely years yeah. to go okay it's past they are who they are they're not going to change and they you know it's not my job to try and change them well and that's the thing to remember is that everybody's on their own path everybody's at their own stage of evolution and you're you're just at a at a different stage of evolution to what they are so mm -hmm. you know, that's that's not anybody's fault it's just the way it's happened um so what would be what would be some steps or what would be the first steps that people should be taking if this is if this is an issue for them if if they're you know listening to this episode and they're thinking oh my goodness that sounds just like me what would be at least one thing that they can do to start moving in the right direction to start healing to do whatever they need to do oh well it's self-love <laughs> self-compassion and self-forgiveness you know three key areas and be kind and gentle with yourself yeah you know that there, there's so much judgment and criticism out in, in the world and blaming but yeah. we we yeah. actually berate ourselves so if you can start with yourself and and just give yourself self-love 
then that raises your energy vibration and then it also helps to open your heart so then you can actually give out love so be love do love radiate love and and then you actually start to really get in touch with wow I feel so good and you know I'm happy and wow life is wonderful and amazing and I'm so grateful to be alive and so blessed to be here on the planet at this time yeah because it is it's it's such an amazing adventure and journey Um, and it's so short but the human beings you know the the the, well the human doing we actually put ourselves through so much suffering Mm -hmm. and and at the end of the day it's like for what purpose yeah which is again which again is programmed exactly and we're not here to suffer suffering is a choice yeah that's an old program get on board with the new program (laughs) yes yes exactly throw that old record out and um yes so this is yeah let go of um be free of suffering and be at peace that's what i say is you know what i want for everybody definitely happy within themselves you know so that their heart is singing and they wake up in the morning and go wow I feel fantastic I love my life I have the best life and just have that passion and enthusiasm and energy and vitality um in every and feel it in every cell yeah in in your body that's beautiful Um, so so what I want to say to people then um or now I'll I've got one last question to ask you but I'll ask it after this um I imagine that you have some um some free resources or how can people contact you if they want to um take this conversation further with you so um best place is my website lindaben.com And on there, uh, there's a a free gift of an adrenal meditation to heal your adrenals if you're feeling burnt out or exhausted, because that's so common um, in our lifestyle. And then um, there's the the meditations. Every month I do a a full moon and a new moon meditation. There's programs, um, the Ben Method, um plus the the 5r program so that's split into level one and level two it's a seven week program but there's also a half day workshop of my 5r program and and then free webinars every monday so i'll be doing a a webinar um very soon and yeah that's every monday at one o'clock um, and then I also have um, support groups as well as Q&A and there's a membership site there for those people who want ongoing support yeah. that they're not ready to do the one-on-one coaching. So this is where the group program um, and the membership uh, coaching sure. um, is very sure. supportive for people that are just starting on their journey um though everyone's welcome to come along to one of my webinars um join my mailing list and then i can keep you up to date with all the different events because i also teach a energy medicine healing class Mm -hmm. which is in person and and then the other classes are online so Awesome. Okay, so I'll put any relevant links in the show notes for people to be able to contact you or or look at all of those things. Thank you for that. So my last question will be or is, what's the one thing that you want people to know? So if if they're listening or watching this episode and you want them to walk away with one big concept, what would that be? To listen to your soul, actually stop and be quiet and just ask your soul, what do you want to tell me today? 
and and connect with your heart get out of the head connect with your heart and listen and you can journal this you can sit in meditation and just get the download and and just yeah keep following your heart mm. oh. yeah. You just said that so beautifully and I just want to add because a lot of, I'm like me, I don't always go that next step, but um, so many of us and I've definitely been one of these, uh, I'm, I'm getting better at it, I'm working on it, I'm getting better at it, but we don't give ourselves the time to sit yeah. down and do that. So it's mm. so important, we need to be doing that. Uh, and the other thing that I've, I've realised um, is that, and, you know, it's very much in my own life, which I'm working on as well, is that um, if we do give ourselves the time, sometimes we don't trust in ourselves, in what comes out of that, and we don't act on it because we don't trust it. So give ourselves the time and trusting the messages that we're getting because it, 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 it's, it, it's not going to come out it's not going to come into our head if it's not valid for us. Yeah, and this is, these are all the, the techniques and tools and things that I teach in my BEM method, which mm -hmm. is balance, energy, nurture and nourish. Yeah. Yeah, it and all ties in together, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Comes back to you. Um, we came into these bodies alone and we'll leave alone, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like... Just enjoy the journey while we're here. Mm, yeah, that's beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Linda, for joining me today. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you, Shari. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. And sending everyone a blessed day. Mm, for everybody you. listening or watching, we'll see you on the next episode. See ya. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Remember to check out the show notes and if you have any comments, feedback or suggestions, I'd love to hear them. If you've received value from this podcast, make sure to subscribe and I'd love you to rate and review the show. Have a fabulous day.